Kia ora team, so we're going to continue on from our last lesson on Friday. So our learning intentions were that we're learning about science equipment in S7, laboratory safety, and the Bunsen burner. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to find some of the science equipment we will be using this year, describe what some science equipment is used for, and recognize the danger in a science laboratory. On top of that, you should be able to safely light a Bunsen burner. So in the last lesson, you went around the class and you looked for some science equipment in this science scavenger hunt. You walked around looking for this list of science equipment. Now you don't have to write this down. You will get given some time in the lesson to write it down a bit later. But for now, just please listen. So safety glasses are used for protecting your eyes. Thermometers are used for measuring how hot or how cold something is. This Bunsen burner that we'll be learning more about today is used for burning a constant flame. Beakers are used for holding large volumes of liquids, while test tubes are used for holding small volumes of liquids. A measuring cylinder measures volumes of liquids. How much liquid have you got? While this boiling tube here is used for holding small volumes of liquids for heating. You see that it's a similar thing to a test tube, but with a test tube you can't use that for heating liquids. It's a boiling tube that you use. Tripods are used for heating things over a Bunsen burner. And a Bunsen board is what we we'll use today to protect the bench from heat. And this gauze mat, it's a very interesting gauze mat, is actually used for spreading heat evenly. There are some safety equipment that you need to know about that's located in this classroom. First, the eye wash. It's that yellow nozzly thing that I showed you on Friday that's um, by my bench at the front. Then there's a first aid kit. This first aid kit is found underneath my bench at the front. And I'm first aid trained, so if you cut yourself or if you burn, have any burns or do anything that you need, uh, you think needs tending to, come see me. And finally, we have a fire extinguisher right at the front by the door. So I want you to think of what these symbols, these warning symbols may represent. We've got three here. I'd like you to turn to the person next to you and take a quick guess of what each of these symbols could represent. I will give you a couple of seconds. All right, so this first symbol here, it looks like a ball that's been cracked and it's got things coming out of it. Well, this symbol represents something is explosive or has the potential to explode. This sign here is, looks like fire flames. Now this symbol represents that something is flammable, that something that could catch on fire. And this symbol here, you've got skull, a skull, and some bones. That to me looks like death. This symbol here represents that something is toxic, something could harm you or even cause death. Now, here are three other symbols. Can you turn to the person next to you and take a guess as to what you think these symbols might represent? I'll give you a couple of seconds. And this symbol here, it looks like I've got two test tubes or two boiling tubes that are filled with liquid. And this liquid is being tipped over and the liquid is hitting a solid surface or even someone's um, hand or body parts. When the liquid hits the hand or body parts and the surface, it starts to eat away at the surface or the body part. This symbol represents that something is corrosive. Something can eat away at a thing. You have to be really careful with corrosive things like acid because if you get it on your hand, if you get it on your skin, it's going to burn you and it's going to irritate your skin. 
Now this symbol here is not a cricket bat, okay? It's not a cricket bat. It's actually a gas tank. And in this gas tank is compressed gas. So it's gas that's tightly packed into a container. Now this has the potential to explode. Now in this picture here, there's a tree without leaves on it, and there's a fish that's upside down. Now when I see an upside down fish, I can kind of tell that the fish is dead. And this tree with no leaves, it looks dead too. This symbol here represents that something can be environmentally damaging. So we don't put environmentally damaging things down the drain or in, in the garden, okay? We dispose of it appropriately. Do you remember this symbol here? The symbol for something's flammable? In this section, we're going to talk about flammable gas. Well, flammable gas means that it's a gas that can easily catch on fire when mixed with oxygen. And a Bunsen burner is a device that we use to combine flammable gas with controlled amounts of air to produce a flame. We use this flame to heat things in the lab. Just a bit of history, the Bunsen burner was actually named after a man called Robert Bunsen after initial designs by previous scientists. So what are the parts of a Bunsen burner? Well, a Bunsen burner is made up of a few things. It's got a metal barrel, this metal shiny silvery tube, and that's on top of a metal base. And in this Bunsen, on this Bunsen burner, the metal base is blue. It's also got a gas inlet or a hole on the Bunsen burner down here where the gas enters the Bunsen burner. Attached to this gas inlet is this rubber tubing. This rubber tubing is connected to the yellow gas taps you see on the, um, per, on the sides of the classroom. These yellow gas taps produce the gas and that goes through the rubber tubing and up through the barrel. There's also a thing called a collar. This collar or metal ring is near the base of the Bunsen burner and it controls the amount of air and oxygen that goes into the Bunsen burner. Underneath this collar is another hole called the air hole. So how does a Bunsen burner work? Well, gas flows from the yellow gas taps through the rubber hose and enters the Bunsen burner through the gas inlet and it flows out to the other opening of the barrel. While this is happening, air is sucked in or drawn in through the air hole that's underneath the collar. You need to light a match and hold it against the top of the barrel to actually see a flame. You can control the temperature of the flame by turning the metal or uh, the, the collar or the metal ring. And as you rotate this collar, you either open or close the air hole. And closing and opening the air hole changes the amount of air that's mixed in with the gas. The more open the air hole is, the more air is drawn in, and the hotter the flame is. Now, the real-time Miss Advienta will show you these different parts on a real Bunsen burner. The Bunsen burner can produce two flames, the yellow flame and the blue flame. When the air hole is closed, the flame will be yellow. So when you turn the collar to close the air hole, the flame will be yellow. This yellow safety flame is easy to see. So whenever you're not heating anything, always close the air hole to make sure the flame is easy to see and it's not a harm to anyone. When the air hole is open, so when you turn the collar, so you open the air hole, this, this Bunsen burner produces a blue heating flame. This blue heating flame is extremely hot and extremely hard to see. It can actually cause serious burns. The hottest part of the flame is about 1,500 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than the temperature needed to melt silver and gold. And that's why it can cause serious burns. Soon, you'll be lighting your own Bunsen burner with your neighbors. But before you can do that, before you can do all the exciting things, we need to go through some safety rules. So number one, wear safety glasses. And you can get this from the red basket 
and shelf one. Number two, tie any long hair back. So what's, what constitutes as long hair? If your hair can um, dangle over your face, that's a long hair. Because you can risk burning it, you must tie it back. Rule number three, use a heat proof Bunsen board under the burner so that we protect our benches from heat. Rule number four, keep the Bunsen burner away from books or away from curtains or anything that can catch on fire. Rule number five, always light the Bunsen burner with the air hole closed and switch to a yellow safety flame when you're not heating anything. This is so that you can see the flame easily and that people around you know there's a flame. And rule number seven, check the gas tap is off when you've finished using the Bunsen burner. Righty tighty. Check that the gas tap is off, turn it to the right. This is the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And now you'll listen to Miss Adviento, the real one, for further instructions.